the bus, and that is uh, none other, uh, of, uh, of course, than Bijan Najafi. Uh, Bijan uh, is an associate professor, a rising professor, actually now at the uh, in the Department of Surgery at the University uh, of Arizona, where he's an engineer with an appointment in the Department of Surgery, which is quite unusual. But let's face it, Bijan's unusual. Um, and you'll see that uh, uh, now uh, in, uh, in this next talk, which I think is going to be superb. And I hope uh, you can enjoy his uh, joie de vivre, coupled with great data like uh, we do every day uh, at, uh, at Salsa uh, and ICAMP. Please help me welcome uh, Dr. Uh, Bijan Najafi, who's going to talk to us about unprotected standing causing amputation disease, the association between uh, standing, walking, and wound healing. Bijan. Thank you so much, Dr. Armstrong. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so as we hear today morning, in fact, an amazing talk of uh, Dr. Slepian, the digital health and variable technology are fast growing and create a lot of opportunity. Uh, the question for us is that how we can utilize those kind of the innovation to provide better care and personalized care for the patient who has active foot ulcer. And this is the topic of my talk. Uh, if you think about it, this may create a lot of opportunity and can change the uh, healthcare across many nations. Uh, almost everybody uh, now own a cell phone. Doesn't matter where they live, in Africa, Asia, Australia, urban, rural area, they have own a cell phone. So we may use this cell phone to deliver health. Here I have actually a recent statistic that recently released by the National Institute of Health about precision medicine to highlight the number of the people in the United States who own a cell phone. If, if you look at even among older people, more than 75% of older adults now own cell phones. What's good about those kind of technology? They have a processor that is more powerful than computer desktop that you have probably five years ago that can use for process the data. They have amazing battery. No, the battery, it doesn't matter. They become cheap and cheaper. And most importantly, they have a smart sensors inside that can be used to track the people and how they move through the world. And we may be able to use those kind of information to see the activity behavior of the patient and maybe find out some information that can be used for decision making, uh, can be used for providing personal care. But the first step that we need to know that is that what kind of the meaningful information we can obtain about those kind of the technology. Uh, this is the purpose of my talk. First, I would like to um, um, actually present some of the initial results that we have about the association, about activity dosage, and wound healing outcomes in patients with diabetes. The second, I would like to highlight some of the initial results that we have about acceptability and perception of the benefit of technology based on variable tech and mobile health for management of the diabetic foot uh, at risk of ulceration. Uh, I don't have any financial um, interest and conflict of interest. However, those studies was funded, uh, one from uh, Qatar National Research Foundation, the first part of my talk, and second part by Orpix Medical Technology. So let, let's ask you from the audience, uh, if somebody has active foot ulcer, what is your recommendation for physical activity? How many of you think that we need to restrict physical activity in the patient who has active foot ulcer? Please raise hand. There are few. This is actually a controversy or actually debated area that whether we should limit physical activity on the patient who has active foot ulcer or not. Some people believe that activities may delay wound healing because of repeated stress, even though that you have offloading, this offloading may not be perfect. The other debate that activity actually should be encouraged because activity can increase blood flow to lower extremity and can assist in wound healing. And there's some evidence that actually walking in particular is beneficial to increase blood flow. This is the research question. We designed a study to uh, address this controversy debate. Uh, this is census chart of our study. Uh, we uh, recruited 84 uh, diabetes patients with active foot ulcer. We excluded those who are non-ambulatory and as well as those who have ischemic wound. 
Ultimately, we had 49 patients that we randomized them on two different offloading. One offloading uh, is irremovable total contact cast, and the other one is removable contact cast. The difference is that one patient cannot remove it, and the other one, the patient has a chance to remove it. Of course, for the both groups, we mentioned that they should wear the offloading all the time when they are active. We followed the patient for 12 weeks. The uh, outcomes for us was change in wound size area on a weekly basis, and also success of wound healing in 12 weeks. Uh, you can see the, some of the uh, demographic information and patient uh, data. Uh, there wasn't any statistical difference between two groups that we had that shows that we have effective randomization. However, I would like to highlight that surprisingly A1C level in our sample was very high. Those are the patients that we recruited from Doha, Qatar. Um, this number may indicate that actually our sample may have low adherence to treatment. Uh, for activity monitoring, actually, we use an innovative technology that we designed and validated. Uh, this uh, simple pendant system uh, can uh, monitor physical activity, um, and we use it every, 48, um, uh, every week for 48 uh, hour monitoring. Um, this device can allow us to find out the different uh, postures, sitting, standing, lying, uh, also allows us to um, identify the sleep quality, that of course in this talk I'm, need, I'm not talking about the sleep quality. Also can find out that how many seats to stand do we have and what is the duration for rising from a chair or sitting on a chair. These are the parameters that we are using to evaluate risk of falling. Uh, also we can look at the walking characteristic like the speed, number of taken steps, and the uh, different parts of the walking, as well as can detect automatically fall. I have a video that shows how it works. I don't know that why the video doesn't work. Can somebody can help to click on that video? Okay, it seems that doesn't work the video. Let's I try again. Okay, so the, the system is based off simply a triaxometer that uh, by signal processing we can identify the number of steps, we can estimate the speed, we can find out almost the different postures like sitting, standing, walking, lying, and also we can look at the quality of the physical activity and all of the parameters nicely now can measure in real time. Uh, let's look at the results. The, these are the change in the wound size area week to week for two uh, offloading modality that we have. At baseline, uh, we didn't have significant difference between the groups, but when you look at from week seven, there was a significant difference both of magnitude of the de uh, reduction in the wound compared to the other group, uh, as well as the absolute value at week seven. Uh, we have reduction by 88% uh, in average in ITCC group by the wound size and 67% in RCW. More importantly, when we look at the speed of the reduction, the wound size, the speed of reduction in the uh, ITTC was almost stable. So this is what we knew from the previous study as uh, in the earlier study of Dr. Armstrong and Dr. Lavery demonstrated is that adherence is, plays an important uh, factor for um, uh, actually wound healing success. Uh, the question that we try to address is about physical activity, whether based on look at the activity behavior, we can explain this difference in the wound healing outcomes between two offloading modality. Interestingly, when we look at the baseline physical activity, that means the very first 40 hours of physical activity, we didn't observe much difference between the activity of two groups, except about the number of situ stand that we have, that we have almost twice uh, more number of situ stand in a group with RCW. But the interesting observation, actually, it was starting from week four. From week four, we start to see divergence about the physical activity behavior of two groups. Uh, as you see here on the gra graph, uh, the, the at the first 48 hours, as you see, there is not much difference. But from week four, the patient in the group of RCW, they are significantly higher active compared to the other one. Maybe simply at week four, they start to forget about offloading. Initially, they may pay attention to the offloading, but after, they don't pay attention. In particular, one of the parameters that becomes very interesting, it was duration of the standing, that the patient care less about it. 
interesting things is if you look at compared to the actually um, rate of wound healing and activity, we observe that um, walking irrespective of type of offloading has negative correlation with the speed of wound healing. But if you look at the standing, the behavior is completely different. In the ITCC group, there is no any correlation between the standing period and um, speed of wound healing. It seems that offloading does pretty good job uh, when the person is standing. But at the same time, it shows that maybe in RCW, patients they don't realize that standing could be as dangerous as walking. And they may remove simply their offloading and stand for extended period of time. And you see the correlation is pretty high. We observe a very ne uh, the negative correlation of close to 0.7 between the speed of wound healing and the duration of the standing. If you look at the difference between the group that successfully healed and the group that didn't heal, irrespective of top of the offloading, uh, we observed that three parameters came up significant difference between two groups. The type of offloading is very important. As you see here uh, in the group that, that healed, we have more percentage of the people who use ITCC. The based on wound area also is important. It can predict the success of wound healing at 12 weeks. But interestingly, the, the parameter about the physical activity that becomes significant between two groups about duration of the standing. As you see, the group that didn't successfully heal at 12 weeks, they have twice more standing period compared to the group that didn't heal. Again, that highlights that probably in some of the educational patients or perception of the patient, standing is not perceived as very important and probably they may not have a good compliance on managing the standing period. So as a discussion and conclusion on the first part of my study, we observed that actually the patients who are using irremovable well total contact casts and they cannot remove them, they have the better success of wound healing that may be explained by the adherence to offloading. Uh, but the part that I believe that's very interesting in this observation is the change in activity behavior from week four. It seems that at the beginning, the patient may have a good adherence to the offloading modality or the management plan, but from week uh, actually four, they, they, they lost their interest. And maybe that may highlight the importance of the rehearsal and uh, education of the patient uh, probably every four weeks or maybe every two weeks. Another thing is that when we are using the logistic regression model and we adjust for all the parameters, including age, initial uh, wound size, area, the only parameters that become important and significantly different for the speed of wound healing as well as the success of wound healing was only the duration of the standing. So may, we may conservatively uh, conclude that maybe we may encourage the person to be active, to walk, but uh, definitely standing is the parameter that's very important and the person absolutely should wear uh, control for standing in particular by wearing the offloading. And I already talked about the rehearsal in patient education. Now we'd like to talk about the future direction and again come back about mobile health and variable technology. How we can use those kind of the information to smartly manage the activity dosage in our patient. The ideal scenario is designing a technology that can inspect food, can automatically identify the harmful events, and maybe notify patient as well as the doctors to provide personalized care. We would like to continue patient education, maybe through this mobile health. We would like to assist patient to take care of their own health, in particular during wound healing and maybe afterward. As well as we would like to assist doctors to decide the actually uh, to provide more personal care to the patient based on the activity behavior, the level of mobility that the person has. We just start to explore in this area. Currently, we are exploring uh, a technology, variable technology, that uses based on the smart insole as well as a smart watch. This is an example of scenario that how the system is working. As soon as they detect the high pressure in a spot of the food that could be simply as external object attached to our foot, they can notify through the watch, the watch can vibrate, uh, and the patient when you click on the watch can highlight that which area of the foot has a high pressure. And they can give some advice and guideline how they should manage the offloading. So everything can be personalized to the patient. The first question that we have on using this technology is that 
how the diabetes patient are, are open to accept those kind of technology, whether this is practical or not. These are the patients that may not be necessary tech savvy. So adherence, perceptional benefit, and user benefit are important. Uh, this was the first research question that we have, and actually it shows that it was a very important research question because initially, like many other people, we thought that using the smartphone probably is the best interface to uh, provide this information. Uh, the earlier version was based on iPod. Uh, we recruited 21 patients. Uh, then the form factor was changed and switched to a smartwatch. And so far we have actually, I, I present actually in this study 11 subjects, but the detail about the wound healing we have, we will present hopefully in Diabetes Food Conference in Netherlands. So if you look at about the acceptability and feasibility, uh, first I should explain that we use a validated questionnaire that used for using the glucose monitoring at home by diabetes patient. And this has been designed to evaluate the perception of the benefit, user friendliness, and acceptability of the person based on the nine item questionnaires. And we use this questionnaire to evaluate the satisfaction and perception of benefit. For adherence, we assume that the person should wear the device at least 10 hours per day. This is the recommendation of wearing the shoes during day. And this is how we estimate that how often a person can wear this device during activity of daily living. Uh, when we observe the baseline data about satisfaction, uh, when we use iPod as interface for notifying the patient, the patient actually wasn't very happy. They didn't like the fact that they should all the time carry the cell phone or iPod all the time. Uh, the quality of the insole and how it's impacted their balance and gait was an issue. This is the comments that came from the patients. Uh, but when it was switched to a smartphone and uh, actually uh, a, a better form factor for the insole, uh, the patient satisfaction increased to more than 80%. Perception of the benefits relative was very good. Uh, in this uh, um, patient, we have, uh, in particular with the new form factor, we achieved to percentage of benefit of more than 80%. More importantly, the adherence that surprisingly was improved. We have now adherence close to 90, 92% on varying of the technology. So as a discussion and conclusion, there are a lot of uh, in, uh, actually opportunity of using this kind of the gadget and variable technology and mobile health. You hear probably from Apple that very soon we have Apple Watch coming to the market. And those technology becomes cheap and cheaper and more affordable. Uh, this kind of the technology uh, may be used uh, to provide personal care to the patient and more importantly assist patients to take care of their own health. All results uh, demonstrate that, of course, uh, for those technology, the adherence is highly dependent on the form factor, in particular the user interface that you're using, the type of the feedback that you're providing to the patient. Most importantly, the false alarms. If you provide so many alerts to the patient, the patient loses the interest and they are not continuing to wear the device anymore. So those are the factors that need to be considered by designing any of those kind of the gadgetry to assist patient. And lastly, uh, or uh, proof of concept study demonstrate that uh, the technology, the smart technology based on smart insole and smart watch, it seems to be acceptable and perceived to be beneficial by patients um, with uh, diabetic and high risk of foot ulcers. Uh, the, the good news that we have, of course, we are earlier phase, so far we follow our patient for three months. We didn't observe any incidence of foot ulcer of using this technology. That's very promising, but we are hoping to uh, complete the study to, uh, to be conclusive about this area. And the lastly, it seems that mobile health technology is a practical tool to manage harmful physical activity and can be used for educate patients and probably prevent and manage diabetic foot ulcer. Thank you so much for your attention.